Today's topic is what metallic colors say about you and your army. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to Way Pan. I'm Cal. And I'm Sunny. Today's topic is what metallics say about you. The color psychology behind metallics. So one of the things that we want to talk about first is the cross-cultural slash universal, and then the cultural aspects to it. So one example of culture will be in Hindu culture, gold is seen as high conductor of positive energy, which is why temples reserve it purely for using it for statues, tipping the tip of the temple's tower. They encourage women and to wear it. And it's not just a thing that happens in Hinduism. Japanese see gold as the perfect color. Yeah, so they have lacquer dishware, which is expensive and very precise in the way that they make. So sometimes when these things break, they use gold to bind the pieces back together. So it still reflects the level of precision and beauty. That's called kintsugi? Yeah, kintsugi. Yeah. But believe it or not, there are some cultures who have negative views when it comes to gold because of its associations with certain things. For example, a lot of island cultures associated gold with pirates. Right. Okay because they're always looting for gold and we're pillaging through people's houses. And they wear gold. Right. That makes sense. So we can see that there's a cultural aspect to it, but when it comes to the universal, universal side of things, everybody understands gold to be wealth and luxury, something that's a hard to come by, which is why people invest in stocks. There's a world gold council and all that sort of stuff. But sometimes things don't quite look like gold. At least that's what you tell me when I paint them. Yeah, some of the times it looks more like a brass or a bronze more than gold. But mm -hmm. it's very much like how you would paint black or white. So if you were painting black, but you push too much into the grays, it start to look like a dark gray rather than a black. When you say push too much, you're it talking means about highlights. highlights. Oh, so okay, it's the yeah. same with the whites, right? If you don't push it high enough, if you don't start with a light gray first and then push up into the whites, it just looks like maybe a light gray rather than a white. So that's that's what you might see with your artwork where you have a bit too much bronze rather than going into the high Start goals. too dark is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, start too dark. But I do understand like your art style is to give the effect of true metallic metal. So really high reflective gold would start with a very dark bronze and then go up to that very high gold to almost white reflection. Okay, and that's one thing that we should talk about right now. The idea of true metallic metal and non-metallic metal. Often non-metallic metal will read as a color instead of as a metallic. As a metallic yeah, yeah, because of the way that it's painted and such. Yeah. Because it doesn't have as that shimmer flakes that the paint actually has. Yeah, mica flakes. Mica flakes, yes, that's what it's called. And different companies use different mica flakes. For example, Games Workshop Citadel uses quite large mica flakes spread out quite a lot in a standard medium, whereas Scale 75 uses a lot of densely packed mica flakes in a gel medium. Yeah, so it makes it a more hyper uh, reflective effect as compared to what Games Workshop might produce. You're yeah, more likely to see it more like a shimmer rather than a reflection. Yeah. So the final part before we get into the actual meaning of things is context. So for example, you might have a Shining Knight and a Metallic Gun in Cyberpunk. Both of these may use the exact same shade and reflectiveness level for a metal, but they mean completely different things. One is about reliability, the other is about danger. Yeah, well, I think they both have danger to them, but the difference is there's a level of heroism and there's a level of fear with the other one. Yes. And I think the main reason is exactly the context. So let's go into our first metal, which is iron slash steel. Steel silver. going towards silver. Yes. Yeah, so the metal actually goes in a gradation from a dark metal to a light metal. So with iron slash steel, it has the correspondence for the past. It's gritty. It's heavy. It's reliable. reliable, but when you go closer up to a silver, a brighter metal, it has more connotation towards the future, modernism, technology. Even looking at 40K, take a look at the original legions. So we've got the Iron Warriors and the Iron Hands. But when you take a look at the Iron Hands, they're named 
after their Primark. And he doesn't have iron hands. He has chrome hands. Mm. But they use the word iron because it's got an older, more refined, more distinguished meaning with its reliability, with its solidness. With its long-lastingness, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. But when we take a look at the more modern age, we get chapters like the Silver Skulls. Mm. So only once we go into the future do we see silver. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So speaking of the future, that's also the same reason why we thought of bronze instead of brass because it is has the connotation with the bronze age. age. Yeah. Yeah, so we denote a lot of these darker metals to the past because that's the type of metals that you would see most often back then, readily available. Gold, shinier metals, those were all reserved for nobles and such like that. As compared to now, it's easier to mine for these things and you use them a lot in your computers, technology, Yeah, and that's well, why it's more... Taking, taking a look at the uh, Warhammer context yeah for example Korn uses brass weapons because Ah. he's one of the oldest of all of the chaos okay yeah that makes a lot of sense so let's go into the uh, brass gold dynamic yes so what kind of armies use like more brass and gold actually that's something I just noticed when it comes to the Warhammer culture the older the brown metal the more likely they are to be evil. So like Chaos has a strong connection to brass. Um, Like Corn has a strong connection to brass. But like you take a look and they use the much darker golds. Yeah, I've noticed that when you have more rusty bronze or just brass in general, it's more reserved for characters which are more gritty, like for example, orcs. And then you have the golds reserved more for like space marines. Like you see yeah, Gilliman. Even, even taking that into account, take a look at the Elder. The all, Elder always have a very shiny, shiny very chrome like effects, you know, because yeah. they're super high technology and very advanced. And anything that's not as advanced, like, like again, the orcs, they just sort of bash things together and make it's them. much more brass. Yeah. Yes. So there's a strong connection when it comes to metallics. The darker you go, the more ancient, the more primitive, the Mm, lighter mm. you go, the more advanced, Advanced. the more refined. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Let's wrap it up. Now, when it comes to metallics, regardless of its color, golds or steels, when it comes to that, it's much more about its level of shade, how dark it is. Yes, so for darker metals, it's more about how hardy, sturdy, reliable it is. And it can also mean a brutalistic or primitive. Yes, when you go brighter, you're thinking more advanced, more refined, and often more heroic. Yes, exactly. But remember those various things we talked about at the start. For example, readability context Mm. culture for example those pirates doesn't matter how shiny their gold is they're still going to be pirates yeah and they're still going to be seen as bad but you know what isn't bad painting each day and you know what helps with that i think i know keep Keep those brushes brushes wet wet. Bye bye No context really is key though. Yeah, obviously. Okay, so we can have super bright and shiny, but it'd be very primitive. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'll show you. <laughs> you will lie eternal, shiny and chrome.